Do you remember this little sound? It's pretty hard not to unlisten to once you've heard it. If you've never heard that before, that is the old dial-up sort of sound. We're going to go back in time, we're going to go through web 1, web 2, and what web 3 is. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel, welcome to the video as well. If you're new, make sure you have subscribed, hit that bell button, leave a like. Now, over the course of the last few months, we've had a lot of information thrown at us about opposition to Web 3.0. We're going to look at what the other ones were, Web 1, Web 2, and what Web 3.0 actually is. So yeah, it's a little bit of a surface scratch. There's a lot of information to get down here. So I'm kind of gliding through it. There's also been some new developments in the space in terms of logins, which I will talk about, which is pretty cool, utilizing unstoppable domains. But at the end of the day, it's entirely up to you what you feel is Web 3.0. There's a lot of different caveats to it, so we will go over them in more detail, but we will look back and go back in time of the old computers, the old internet base, the old broadband sort of situation, and what actually is the difference between Web 3.0 most importantly, versus what we're actually used to right now. Decentralization to focus. Let's get into it. Oh, here we are. Web 1, basically. So this is a comparison website of all of them. As I say, it's just a surface scratch. Don't go too balls deep. But in terms of what it was, it was static pages. It was rubbish. Content is served from the server's file system. Not very secure. And pages were built using, you know, common gateway interfaces, there were frames and tables used, it looked ugly. And just to give you an idea, it's kind of like this genre, this era when things were a massive lump and it's like, ugh. And, you know, some of the oldies will remember these sort of things. When we look at like, you know, what the websites used to look like, used to look like this, oh, horrible. So they were very static. They had no visualization. You couldn't really interact with anything. It was just a page and I remember back in the day, a lot of people were scared to utilize payments back in those days. Like no one would ever buy on the internet. And when we look at like what the social networks like, you know, MySpace, for example, and, and the first versions of Facebook, a lot has changed, which is why I'm kind of, you know, in that forefront of network effect. I'm a massive fan of network effect of how things grow over time. And it's important to know, and we're talking here about bubbles, right? And there was a massive bubble and I do think we're going to get one as well in the space of Web 3.0, which is why I think, and you know, throughout this video, you're probably going to get a few little sound bites from me saying certain things which I believe in. And I think it's going to be another case of that. I think, you know, the likes of the metaverse and NFTs is probably going to have a few little bubble episodes where it won't quite take off just yet. But I think mass adoption will come. And we've had that in these time periods where we've had a massive swell of companies trying to get you know first move advantage as we say and yeah they obviously crash and we all know what's happened off the back of that and when we look at how these apps were kind of developed and how they were and this was amazon back in the day look at it oh my god you know absolutely scary when you look at how much things have came and the types of websites that were back in those days and you know, it's great to go back in time and to look and to see how slow the internet was and what didn't work and the broadband speeds versus what there were then, you know, all that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, broadband wasn't a thing back then. A lot of people thought the internet was a fad. And this is where the comparisons kind of start off with. A lot of people back in those days didn't believe that the internet would take off. They didn't think people would use it. The source of information back in those days was newspapers, was books and also television a lot has changed even if we compare television now versus what it is today things have changed and this is where we go on to web 2.0 which is what you're kind of used to really this is the world what we were kind of in really like the centralized world your big tech companies the ability to use your online banking the ability to do the internet as a normal thing right now when we go into web 3.0 you'll start to notice there's going to be a bit of a difference which is probably why this video might become important in the future when you're kind of trying to compare them all. Now, when we start looking at what this is, now, obviously, we're going to go into this realm here of, you know, blockchain. But we need to talk mainly about 2.0. What does that give us versus Web 3.0? Well, 
a lot of control to the central authorities, which is essentially law, CEOs, founders, stock market, shareholders, all that good stuff in terms of board members, which they like to control, which is why we're getting a lot of opposition right now, I believe anyways, when we're looking at certain things around Web 3.0, which I will come on to. So when you go into your phone, majority of that is Web 2.0. When you go on the likes of Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, it's kind of, you know, what's the word? It's censored. And you can't really do much, even though it's interactive, even though it's got the much, much better features than what it used to be. There's a lot of issues there regarding what Web 2.0 is. And we look at it and it has changed massively in the course of, you know, what Web 1 was versus what Web you know 2 is. And when we go back here, you can see here, you know, the, the, the whole difference of it is the dynamic content. Free sorting of information permits, you know, used to receive and classify information correctly. All this kind of, it's all right, but realistically, there's always going to be a element of control and information flows from the site owners, um, online commenting, you've got develop, developed APIs, all that kind of stuff. And then we've got obviously what the kind of are. So you've got blogging, you've got podcasting, RSS, social bookmarking, social networking, social media, and web content voting. So yeah, it does a mustard, it does the thing, but we need to kind of talk about Web 3.0, right? Because not only does it, you know, do the, the thing, but there's a lot of opposition. And it's obvious that some of the people in high positions are going to be opposing it. For example, here, you know, Jack, he's probably one of the most prominent figures right now in, you know, Bitcoin, essentially the founder and, well, ex CEO of. Twitter now he's recently left to work on, on some Bitcoin sort of stuff. Now, him, Elon Musk, as an example as well, don't really like Web3. And it probably draws down to the comparison of the obvious here. Control. They want to control certain things. Now, what Web3.0 is, it's decentralization. It's the ability to work as a one community with decentralization in simple terms. And it's where everything changes from going forward when we start unraveling what cryptocurrency can enable us to have. So if we go back into the basics here, what it is, this is some of the stuff here. So you've got artificial intelligence, semantic web, for example, as well, 3D graphics, essentially the metaverse, um, connectivity, interoperability, multi-chain, as I've talked about, and other elements as well. You know, you can see it's simple, right? And when we start looking at what these look like, when we compare them, there's a bit of a difference in terms of what technology can give us and then what we can develop as that. Now, when we start talking about opposition as well, it's important to note that these are obviously probably going to have a big say in what's going to happen. And I do think, you know, the world of, you know, bubbles and stuff like that could well very much happen. But the one thing I want to you know, you can kind of write this down if you want. A lot of the growth of cryptocurrency in terms of good projects will not come from just investors and also traders. It will come from a network effect of people that are utilizing the ecosystem without even realizing it. So for example, here, buying a game, utilizing the game, earning the cryptocurrency to do certain things, metaverse, NFT kind of collectible sort of stuff, random stuff like that, but also the ability to use decentralized apps without even having an investment to get within that. So maybe traditional finance. What's going to be the difference in about five, ten years? Maybe there'll be a cryptocurrency element to it. What about payments? All that kind of stuff in terms of quick payments on your phone. Guess what? It's on a blockchain instead, instead of doing the traditional way. A lot of things have changed. But let's talk about some examples here. Now, this is kind of an old article, but it has been updated recently. This is just going to give you a bit of a taste of what it is realistically in terms of the simple, the simple version of it and how it will kind of look. So you can see here, Web 3.0, third generation, and the history of the web there, you can see it. It's very, very simple. So HTML, interactive, and then decentralization, privacy, and security, which is what I'm going to go on in a minute. So the benefits of this is obviously the security, interoperable, data ownership, massive, no interruption of service, no cloud systems will ever go down. Amazon Cloud, for example, permissionless blockchains and 
you can kind of get the picture of where I'm going with this and why it's so different. But then you got the stack, you got the DAP browsers, as you probably know, Brave Browser as an example, decentralized applications. Then you got the, you know, the fear and virtual machine, you got the storage, the consensus, off chain computing, data feeds, internet of things. So data feed would be like sort of oracles, you know, internet of things, you know, multiple supply chains, stuff like that, all kinds of stuff, right? Hardware clients and then internet protocol networks. Pretty different to what we're used to, right? So when we start looking at this, what else have we got? And we've got to look at the obvious here. You know, as you know, I'm a massive fan of, and I do believe, now this is all, by the way, so don't just take this with a pinch of salt, by the way, but this is just giving you an idea of certain things that you can look out for. And a lot of these are old, but as things have obviously progressed, I think mean, this is from 2018, so yeah, caution. Um, just give you an idea, right, of where things can go, certain things. So you've got decentralized messaging, streaming services, insurance and banking, that's changed a lot. Decentralized exchange, obviously, social networks, you get the picture, right? It is all changing. It's given us, the peoples, as a voice, which is important. Now, the one thing I do want to talk about, and I mentioned it at the start of this, login security mechanisms to keeping things safe. We all know when you go onto, like, um, any website, you've got this, you can sign in via social networks. There's a little image here that I've just put on the screen in terms of showing you the, the difference between what it used to be, the versions of the new and what we're used to now, and then what it is kind of moving on to. The ability to sign into websites utilizing your private key and unstoppable domains will allow that to happen, which is a relatively new feature. And this will allow you to connect to all kinds of dApps and other services by having privacy of your own private key instead of a username and a password. That is a bit of a difference in terms of changing the guard in terms of security. Security is the biggest flaw in our society, really. See, privacy and security. I know in cryptocurrency, it's one of those things where there's a lot of scammers around. You can get hacked very, very easily, but this will enable them. This is why I say when I use MetaMask, I always use a ledger. This is why I use certain things and encrypt certain things to make it much better. But that is going to the next level in terms of showing you exactly what you can do and that's just one little element of it. It's pretty cool. Now, other things to talk about as well, and in terms of projects. Now, this is just an idea. This is just showing you. And you all know I'm a Polkadot and a KSM fan. Well, they have their own foundation, Web3 Foundation, to fund, research, develop teams who are building the foundation of the decentralized web. So it's certainly getting there. And I think Polkadot will probably be one of the biggest players in it, essentially. And as I've said in previous videos, I'm a massive fan of multi-chain. I think multi-chain will become the next element of growth in the space in terms of the ability to talk and communicate with other services utilizing different chains, which will enable that decentralization, will enable the scalability and the use case of Web 3.0. When we go back in time of like server crashes and everything on one point of failure, those days are getting removed. They're going to be changed massively. This is why big, massive people are essentially, I think, anyways, against it because they don't have control. This enables you to have control. Now, the governance model on Polkadot is a great example here. It works as a technical committee and also you as a community holder can have a say on what happens. Decentralization at its finest. No one's going to change things because, you know, because why, you know, why not? I got bored. Let's just do this. Why not? It's the only problem with being a founder. You can literally change whatever in the playbook and people dislike it. This is why a lot of, you know, things are failing at the moment in terms of trying to compete with big, massive industries because they just shut them down. Eventually, they won't be able to. So, there you go. It's brief. It's simple. And I hope you like it. Web 3.0. That's what it is. But... Do you like it? That's the most important thing.